or when they shall rise from the dead. Matthew 4, in the resurrection. I think I put them both. In the resurrection, when they shall rise from the dead. Oh no, Luke has, and the resurrection from the dead, neither Mary nor are given in marriage. Matthew has resurrection in the next verse after that. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read? And Mark doesn't have that word there. And as touching the dead. So I could put resurrection there and have the version from Mark earlier, when they shall rise from the dead. Luke, now that the dead are raised, even Moses. That the dead are raised. Okay, so that's actually opposite. So actually I could do either. What? I think I like how Matthew has it more as touching the resurrection. Same as Mark, as touching the dead, meaning speaking about. Luke just says, now that the dead are raised, but he's still speaking about a future event, so it's kind of worded strange in Luke. Yeah, I'm going to go with the way Matthew and Mark have it, as touching. And I'll use resurrection. So I'll do Mark's version first, then touching the resurrection. But before those, there are some words in Luke that I have to add. The children of this world marry and are given in marriage. But they that shall be accounted worthy to obtain the world then and the resurrection but I'll put for when they shall rise from the dead they neither marry nor give any marriage so I'm going to go with Luke first the children of this world marry and are given in marriage but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world now and the resurrection from the dead or when they shall rise from the dead yeah that's what it needs to be so it has to be but contrary to what Jesus said before in Luke the children of this world marry so I'm going to use that instead of four. Now I'll move right into when they shall rise. When they shall rise. This is just Mark. From the dead is actually also in Luke. From the dead. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither marry nor are given in marriage. So they is first in Mark and Matthew. They. So, okay, so they is Matthew and Mark. Matthew and Mark for they. Neither marry nor are given in marriage. So that's all three. Luke has another, neither, neither can they die anymore. Well, I guess it's a good thing I used nor earlier because this would be a third neither. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal to the angels. Mark, but are as the angels, which are in heaven. So no mention that they can die no more. 
therefore they are equal to the angels, but are as the angels of God in heaven. I think I'll save of God for this next sentence in Luke. And are the children of God. So I'll just say they are equals to the angels or are as the angels in heaven. I think as is better than equals because in a fashion we're going to be like angels. Yeah, I'm going to go with as. That's in Matthew and Mark anyway, so it's the majority witness. From Matthew and Mark, but R is all three. As is Matthew and Mark. The angels is all three. Which are in heaven. Matthew in heaven. So which are is Mark only. Matthew and Mark in heaven. That's the end of the verse in Matthew. And Mark, Luke, however, has two more sentences. You know what? I'm going to use the rest of these sentences from Luke as another verse because this is getting really long and I already thought this. I don't have to have this added they earlier. But they are as the angels because they is mentioned a few times. When they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor give marriage. Neither can they die anymore, but are as the angels which are in heaven. So it doesn't need to be another they. So I could use that here, right next to each other, for they and instead of R equals, I'll move into R, the children. And now of God is Matthew and Luke. Of God, Luke now being the children of the resurrection. Now, I have another option. I could have and at the beginning of this last verse instead of for. Because I use for they but I could use and, which would actually be the beginning, are the children of God. It begins and are the children of God, but I would have to put they in there in order to have a subject for this new sentence. So I could have and they are the children of God or for they are the children of God. I think and is actually better. Since I'm gonna have the period, I think the and makes more sense. There is a sentence structure I want to change. When they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry. Matthew has, in the resurrection, they neither marry. This is the first they. However, in Luke, they are mentioned earlier. And the children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain the world it goes right into, in Luke, neither marry nor are given in marriage. So this second they here from Matthew and Mark, before neither marry, is redundant, and I think it's actually a problem. This is how it reads. The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. It doesn't really sound that much of a problem because I have that big interjection, when they shall rise from the dead. I could just repeat the subject, they, but I think it'd be better without it if I just combine them all to the first time they are mentioned in Luke so that it would go like this. 
The children of this world marry, and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, when they shall rise from the dead, neither marry, nor are given in marriage. That interjection is sort of here in Luke, and the resurrection from the dead, but I instead use Mark's, when they shall rise. So because it's still this format in Luke, subject, interjection, and then continue right on, neither Mary, no additional subject mentioned. I think it's okay. 